what is a web service is a service provided on internet okay is a web service a service provided on internet is a web service okay so that is somebody some other company organization is providing some facility on internet and I can connect to it or HTTP from my program and access it is yeah is web services what are the characteristics of web services that is um, you can exchange data between two web applications using XML that is the standard way of representing the web service okay they are loosely coupled if you look at the yesterday's class that is SOA service oriented architecture you have something called loosely coupled right and uh, asynchronous or uh, synchronous communication that is the client sends the response uh, <coughs> client sends the request okay so um, the server receives it till the server responds client waits that is the synchronous communication that is a regular form of communication there is asynchronous mode of communication that is uh, JMS does that that is Java messaging service that is you will have uh, <coughs> this one uh, like you know the client sends the request to the server and a client does not wait for the server to respond right it just proceeds with its work that is the client communication that means asynchronous once the server receives it process it and sends the communication back to the client and once the client get notified that there is uh, the stuff that is um, the the server has responded something then client looks at it processes it and that takes care of it that is asynchronous communication right uh, Ajax is the one which does asynchronous communication that is asynchronous JavaScript and XML we have looked at it actually the question is why web services okay the reason of web services is that right, within the organization let's say there are multiple projects running right and you want to communicate between the projects running let's say two departments are there and they don't have any other form of communication but the data has to be exchanged between these two departments they have individual projects running now what they can do is Right? they can write a web service a function and which is exposed on the internet and they can say okay you can come and access my function you provide this data for me and I will give you whatever you want that is the uh, like you know web service is there and see one is within the organization similarly between organizations let's say as I was discussing previously Yahoo provides a weather forecasting okay Yahoo provides weather forecasting and uh, that is the service provided on internet right that is a service provided on internet so they have certain functions which can perform that operation so what it will do is okay uh, my company is into the travel department now I want to know weather forecasting at that particular city on particular date so in that case I will use Yahoo services through program saying that asking okay what is the weather on this particular date for this particular city through program on internet right so in that case okay so okay so th that is between the organizations what is the advantage of this one is <coughs> some of the uh, advantages are well, like you know uh, it is very fast okay and where and all it is used like you know in purchase orders ordering queries processing shipment requests and many more purchase orders it is like this let's say I am a manufacturing company and I maintain the inventory of the products <coughs> okay now 
see uh, for maintaining the inventory there is something like minimum limit and maximum limit of the product okay now uh, the moment the product reaches the minimum level there should be a way where I have to order so I will write a, my program in such a way that the moment one product reaches the minimum level below minimum level immediately I will send an email by my program or I will access the other person like you know organization function to uh, order right there may be a function exposed by the vendor by name order and for that which particular uh, item and what is the quantity I can use a web service for that it all does automatically the moment the product comes down immediately the client the vendor gets notified through a like you know program by using their web services right okay and many more like this okay the, the where and all <coughs> okay web services are used okay now some of the examples of the web services are that is like you know stock quote service let's say I have a website where people can buy the uh, the stocks from me but for that they would like to know what is the current price of the stock market in that case what I will do is I will have to talk to someone who can provide the regular updates of the stock information for me right so I will have to know that one right so who will provide that I need to find out someone maybe like you know SEBI or anybody RBI or anybody stock exchange okay Sensex, they might have provided a web service where uh, I will connect to their uh, server by IP address and a particular port and I will have to call their function. What the function? I As an input, I will have to pass which uh, this one, what is that? Uh, <coughs> which stock, for which stock I want to get the price, then I will have to send that with that I'll be able to get the stock service right similarly like you know <coughs> web service is nothing but a service a function provided by an organization where you can connect to that function using the server and uh, use that function pass the corresponding arguments and then uh, pass the corresponding arguments and uh, and get the data back right so uh, that is uh, see something like a router finds a delivery of goods a weather service I have already told you that is imagine Yahoo provides a weather forecasting service ideally what happens I will have to call up the, the, that company and give the uh, like you know name of the location and the date on which date the weather forecasting so they will tell you how much temperature it is now the other way is they have written a rather than having a manual service you can do in a server and internet and function they write a function and name get weather they may take the location and the date as input it will return the current weather forecasting now what it will do you as if like you know a client I will connect to that server and call that function as if that function is locally available for me by passing the location and the the date and that function will return the uh, this one for me the weather on that particular day for me right this is about weather forecasting but the entire transaction takes place on internet on web so that is why it is called as web service okay now right now there are two ways you can communicate your web services using two protocols okay one is called as SOAP protocol another one is called as a RESTful protocol SOAP stands for simple object access protocol and RESTful stands for okay representational state transfer protocol okay SOAP is simple object access protocol <coughs> it uses XML for data communication RESTful is basically used for 
it uses a HTTP mainly. A RESTful is a more of a servlet. Okay. Okay, before I move on with uh, SOAP, okay, SOAP is very old protocol and it's kind of uh, like, you know, it is kind of done. So, everybody are like, you know, stopping the SOAP and moving on to RESTful protocol. I will show you a website. See here, long back, Google also used to develop web services using SOAP protocol, but uh, like, you know, they have stopped. <coughs> See, you can look at this SOAP search API. The SOAP search API is no longer available. Thank you for your <coughs> interest. <coughs> now client interacts with SOAP message using, see there is a client, this is a server which provides a service. Okay, JAX stands for Java API for XML web services okay so this is runtime it generates a message and sends a message to the service in soap again this will take it process it converts back into soap message sends it back to the client okay next look at the architecture <coughs> okay now there is something called <coughs> there is something called UDDI registry okay so uh, the UDDI registry is UDDI registry is basically you have a web service provider they will publish with a UDDI registry web service the client what they will do is they will talk to the client okay they will the client will talk to the UDDI registry look for it and then it will come over here then the client and server communication takes place okay UDDI stands for universal description discovery and integration I will repeat again let's say there is a company which is providing a service right now after the service is ready what they have to say is they have to publish with something called a common repository or registry right so these people will go on publish in the registry anybody who wants this web service first they should check with the registry right so if it is available in the registry then it moves the control over here if it is not available in the registry right this web service requester will get saying that whatever the service <laughs> the client does the requester is asking for it will not be available let's say this service provider has registered with UDDI registry then the, the the requester will request in the registry registry will look for a particular service what the requester is asking for if it is available it will say yes this is available in this particular location initially this will help to connect okay once the connection has established then the requester and the provider will communicate with each other without the third party without the UDDI okay this is how it is it is like if you take a real-time example <coughs> okay somebody is like in a publishing with a shop right the retailer and the customer will go to the retailer and buy it and come now let us look at this in little more detail <coughs> okay now as I said the, see again soap is basically it is not used so much it is going down but I just want to provide you the architecture and other things like that how is it what is it okay now uh, there is a soap client this is the soap processor visual business logic and service now let's look at what is it the so okay soap client it's an application which is looking for a web service now this is a service which is, let's assume, it is provided by the other organization. Now, the communication between the client and the server takes place using HTTP, Hypertext Transfer Protocol, right? It sends the request, after processing, it responds the, receives the response. Now, what happens is, <coughs> Okay, now what happens, whatever the request I want, it will convert into the SOAP format, 
right? <laughs> it converts into a SOAP format. SOAP is a specific format written in XML, right? I will show you the particular format. It writes into the XML. That XML file, basically it will have saying that, like, you know, this is the request, this is the, res <laughs> this is the response I want, okay? And uh, like, you know, uh, this is the function I'm going to use. This is the data I'm passing. All that information will be provided in the SOAP client. And then that will be sent on HTTP request to the service provider. It could be in the same machine or a different machine. It could be the same organization or <coughs> different organization. The SOAP processor, again, SOAP stands for Simple Object access protocol it is a xml based <coughs> protocol right so once it receives now once the xml is received by the client on the server side what it will do it will take the xml file and decipher that means it will convert it will look for what is the client what is that client is looking for Right? So it will take that and take only that content right? and executes that in the business logic, converts back into SOAP and sends it back. Okay? What is this WSDL? WSDL stands for Web Services Description Language. WSDL stands for Web Services Description Language. Basically what WSDL file contains is all the functions which is supported in the business logic. All the functions, services supported in the business logic will be available in this WSDL file. Okay? So first it will check whether this particular service is available or not. If it is there, then it will go and proceed further. So if I will repeat, so client will take whichever the function it requires, put it in the XML format and then sends on the internet to the server which may be in the same machine, same project, same organization or a different organization, different location, right? There will be a SOAP processor, it will convert the XML input to whatever the input requested by the client, then it will use the business logic, convert back into the SOAP format, sends it back to the client. Client converts back the SOAP format into a normal format and understands, performs whatever it is required. Now, if you look at, <coughs> see that's what I told, right? Yeah. Um, the client data is converted into XML using SOAP format. It is sent on internet. That is what exactly I have told you. The whatever the client data is there, it will be converted to XML format in SOAP. Okay. Okay. SOAP, SOAP is a one, it has one format which will be written in XML, right? That will be sent on internet. <coughs> Okay, SOAP message is passed by the service at the other end. SOAP message is passed by the service at the other end. Data and the required information is understood. Right? On the server side, whatever the data you are passing and the information you are passing from the client, it is understood. Then, what it will do, as I said, it will perform the requested task and then converts back into the SOAP format and sends to the client. Client takes that SOAP format, reconverts back to the original data and uses it. The same thing, whatever I have conveyed. <coughs> Some more information about SOAP. So as I said, SOAP stands for Simple Object Access Protocol. Simple Object Access Protocol is what SOAP stands for. SOAP is used to communicate between two applications. As I said, the application could be in the uh, so between in the same organization, between two applications in the same organization, or it could be the application between different organizations. Right? Basically, SOAP is just a format to communicate between two applications where communication takes place on internet, right? That is what it is. <coughs> SOAP is a simple format <coughs> of sending messages. It's like, let's say, it, it's just a format, right? In a particular format, you will be making and uh, sending it, right? So as I said, SOAP communicates via internet over HTTP. SOAP is platform independent. Definitely it is platform independent. Why? Because XML itself 
is platform independent. That is why even SOAP is also platform independent. <coughs> See, if you write uh, any data in XML format or a SOAP format, uh, so it is like either you write in uh, Linux, either you write in Mac, Windows, it remains the same. It doesn't change. That's the reason SOAP is platform independent. It is not depending on any platform. Okay, so as I said, SOAP is written. SOAP is a format written in XML, <coughs> and it is a recommended by W3C organization. Okay, there is something called. Uh, okay, if you have to send the SOAP format, the SOAP format has got three portions. Okay, the first portion is called as SOAP envelope. Second portion is called as soap header and the third portion is called as soap body okay soap envelope will have just a root element okay one root element will be there and second you have a header information right what is this from where it is coming how is it all the kind of header information is there it is optional and you will have the third option which is called as soap body SOAP body will have all the specific information. It is like which function I need to call, what data I need to put, what is the type of data, what response I am expecting. All those things we will put it in the SOAP body. For example, if I want to get the stock information for <coughs> Oracle stock, then what I will do? I will say, uh, see it may be provided by the function by name get stock, get stock. Okay, so get stock name of the attribute is oracle and like you know for the which stock I want oracle then I will say get me that and response it will expect some floating data or a string data where it will get me the stock value. All that information I will provide in SOAP body. Now you will see how exactly it is. What exactly is happening? This is a XML version prologue. This is the envelope that is a root element. Then you have a header information then you have the get stock price. This is a body, a so body, right? So then you have get stock price is the function you are calling. The stock name is Oracle. So this is what is what you are sending to the server. Okay. Now this is the soap message response you will get. <coughs> Again, you will not be writing the soap because like soap is going down in the market. It is not at all used. Slowly it is diminishing. Slowly, slowly it is going off from the market. But I have kept it because you will know how exactly the web service works. Right? The restful web services are catching up very fast in the market. Right? It's, it's, a, it's like a spring and hibernate. Restful web services is also very, very hot in the market. Right? It is required by every organization. Okay, if you look at it now, uh, see this is a prologue, this is an envelope, then you get the get stock price response which is coming from the server. The price is $100.50 which it is responding. Okay, now we have looked at <coughs> SOAP request and SOAP response. Now let us come to visual file. As I said, visual file stands for web services description language web services description language on the server side all the functions are there so which is exposed to the client or these functions can be used by the client <coughs> will be specified in the visual file right so it is an xml document you will have all the like you know all those things will be available for you for example what is a function what is the input argument? What is the output argument? What is the data type of input? What is the data type of output? What are the functions? Which protocol it is bind to? Like you know, the mode of communication is what? Is it HTTP? Is it FTP or HTTPS? Okay. Then on which website or which URL this service is available? All those things are mentioned in the visual file. Okay, so again, uh, Wisdom describes the web services, and Wisdom is a W3C recommendation. Now, <coughs> Wisdom has like five top uh, portions, right? That is, the Wisdom XML document has the following elements. As I said, 
the types. The first type, it will specify the data type. What are all the data types which you are taking as an input parameter, output parameter from the client and from the service. What the data will come into a web service, what and all the data will go out of the web service. Okay, so that will be mentioned in the type. Messages is the functions. What and all the functions which are exposed by this web service, right? As an organization in the visible file, what and all the web services are exposed will be given over here. And the connection between the so now here you will specify all the web services binded with the input and output. Now you have a web service and you will have to say get stock price. Okay. It will take the name of the stock and it will give you the price of the stock. So those things binding will take place in the port type. The binding is it will specify which protocol it is. <coughs> it will specify is it TCP IP, is it HTTP, is it HTTP, is it FTP, what kind of a protocol is used for communication. Right? And the services on which URL this web service is connected to. It is like Yahoo is providing one web service get weather forecast is a function, right? It is giving. Now what it will you'll be doing is you'll be using that function. That function is available in a particular URL, right? You have to specify the URL over here. Now just take a look at it. You may not understand anything, but still this is fine, right? So this is the example of a visible file. What I will do is I will give you a minute of time for you to go through this file. Okay. See if you look at this, this is your message, hello request. You have first name as string, okay, then greeting as another string. This is the request, this is the response. Then you have uh, this is the port type. Then you have a say hello is the operation. The say hello request, say hello response. This is the request object which is coming, this is the response. Now binding, you are binding that, okay, with hello, uh, say hello, this one, the function and you are providing that as part of the URL. Here you must be providing as a TCP IP communication, so right here, okay. So here it is not there but I can provide you another link, okay. Now if you want to generate Okay, now the thing is for uh, Eclipse has got something called Apache Access where it can generate complete Eclipse for you. That is like you know in a complete SOAP format for you. Like you know the, the request, response, everything is launched by Apache Access itself. Okay, so uh, now you can develop the string like this. You can expose it and uh, see. Uh, web services implementation how exactly it is you can say generate web services api then you once you select web services if you select this one in using apache access it will generate complete client for you okay so if you give uh, charan as the input invoke it will say hello charan right this is this one so basically we are not going to use the soap at all <coughs> right so that's a reason like you know, I'm not uh, showing at the end if uh, it's okay then uh, I can show it to you, right? So it's going down drastically, 